not in the middle of a bloody pandemic. We don't always have people who would take videos of our dark training sessions. And we all know how important our videos, especially if you're training alone without a trainer or stuff. And so in this video, I want to talk about it. How to take videos of yourself while you're training without too much hustle so that it's easy and there's no extra friction for your trainings. And I've divided this video in three parts. I'll start with the least important and I'll go to the most important. And so first I'll talk about uh, cameras and second I'll talk about tripods and then I'll talk about the uh, camera placement and uh, where to place it and uh, how to get the best shot so that you can see everything you need to see from your video. The reason why I say that the cameras are probably the least important stuff about this is that I think that you don't need the highest quality videos for your dog trainings. Mostly we just want to check back and see what happened, what went wrong, what went good and maybe sometimes share our videos on Facebook or on Instagram. I really think there should be more dog training videos on Instagram, please. Now for cameras, if you have a smartphone, you're basically set because most smartphones have good enough cameras for taking videos. Even like older models, older cameras on the smartphones, they're fine for taking dog training videos and also they have really really wide angles which is uh, sometimes really important for the taking dog training videos sometimes we're training in really small places so i honestly think that smartphone if you have one is a really really good option and uh, most of the people don't even need to look any further just to grab your phone place it and take videos on your phone and also it's really really easy to check back on the videos on the phone and it's really easy to share them so if you are doing some some sort of uh, distance training with uh, like online courses or stuff where you have to send your videos to the uh, trainer who will then uh, review them. I think that the phones are by far the easiest way to do that and so yeah just go by phone. But phones aren't the only option you have. Obviously you can use any other camera you have I wouldn't advise to buying any special camera for, for dog trainings because knowing myself, for example, I'm always really worried to take like a some, sometimes more expensive, more fragile camera to the dog training. So you never know what will happen there. But there is one exception and the exception is a 360 camera. The one I'm using is GoPro Max. It's a really durable camera and it has a huge, huge advantage. And it's the fact that uh, with those two lenses on the both sides this camera films everything that happens around imagine it's uh, filming like a sphere that's uh, happening around it and it can see everything that's uh, in the like uh, where are there no obstructions and then later you just download uh, that video to your phone and you reframe it and so you just show in the video exactly what you want to see and this is what I've been using for my agility trainings for like more than a year now, almost a year, something like that. And uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen I post on uh, stories or sometimes in the reels videos of uh, my dog agility trainings. And uh, you can see they're like going around following me and I do this with the 360 camera and I freaking love it. I don't want to turn this video into gushing about 360 camera. They're not paying me on it or anything. It's just what I love to use. There of course are drawbacks to this camera and it's that workflow gets a bit more convoluted. After you finish your training you have to download your videos to your phone or to your computer and then you have to reframe it and uh, at first the process might look I don't know intimidating and it it sometimes is a bit slow going but I really love the fact that there is zero friction in my agility trainings. I just uh, put the camera down. I don't have to think about where I placed it. Will it see everything? Uh, was my head cut off? Was that obstacle too far? Like I just don't have to care about stuff. I know that everything is on the video and I can uh, think about framing and stuff after I finish my training. And so when I'm in the trainings, I'm only in the training mindset and then I get home and then I get into the video mindset and it's really, really beneficial to me. 
But I just want to warn you that, uh, for example, my previous phone, which was a severely older model, didn't have enough uh, processing power to do the reframing, so I had to do it from my computer. And the uh, GoPro computer integration sucks. It's almost non-existent for PC, and there's only Apple. But the uh, GoPro Max isn't the only 360 camera at the market right now. Here on the screen are the three models that I think would be worth looking in right now. So for cameras, I think that mostly your phone will do just fine. But uh, if you're really looking for something more advanced, or if you're in the market of buying a new camera that you'll also use for your dog trainings, I would suggest going with the 360, it's one of the most amazing things and it has helped my training so much, I freaking love it. Now for the second part, let's talk about how you can mount your camera so it uh, stays where you want to stay because you know, you can't just drop it on the ground. And uh, I think that the most common solution would be like a simple tripod. Um, the pros for this is that it's uh, really stable because it has uh, three legs and it also can get really high. You can like this one goes, I don't know how high it's my old tripod that I don't use anymore. Uh, the cons for this is that if you want to go really high, those legs go in like triangles and they take a lot of space and also tripods can tend to and also tripods tend to be really really heavy and if you're already carrying your, like your bag and the crates for your dogs and stuff you maybe don't want to take your tripod but if you're just sitting at your home like maybe your tripod can stay in the room where you are training your dogs then the tripod would be a really good option but I must confess that I almost never use a, a bigger tripod instead my favorite option is actually a selfie stick um, selfie sticks can also like uh, turn into bigger ones so you can put it uh, like in proper height. I put uh, the selfie stick on a really really small tripod and uh, so I just uh, screw it on this tripod and so it takes very very little space and like cons for this is I can put it on a, like smaller spaces for example I often in agility training so I'll put uh, the camera on dog walk if I'm not uh, actually running the dog walk and so it's small enough that it can stand on the dog walk and this weighs a li very little it's uh, very compact you can easily throw it in, in your bag this usually resides in my agility bag and uh, so it's a really really easy option and because I also do vlogs on this camera so this uh, camera always resides on the selfie stick and it's a really really good option and also selfie stick is one of the cheapest options like tripods even the cheapest uh, tripods tend to get a bit more expensive but selfie stick with a mini tripod you can get for what 15 10 bucks or it, it doesn't really cost that much um, and another really really interesting option is um, those uh, gorilla pods and so they're very interesting in the fact that like they have bendable legs they come in different sizes actually i'm not even sure that gorilla pod is the correct name correct generic name but uh, i don't know i think that's the name by which people tend to know these things and you can either wrap it around something like this so you can uh, make it uh, stand like this or you can put it on a like a different smaller places you can make it make it like a stand and um, I don't use this often but I have found some occasions where it's more useful to use the gorilla pod and also for all of those options you can always get a, like a phone holder attachment where you just uh, you just screw it on your tripod or your gorilla pod or whatever and you just put your phone in like this and it holds it perfectly it's absolutely fine and I, I trust this is, there are no there have been no issues with this holding my phone so i i'd say that the absolute best option is the selfie stick with a mini tripod and of course you can always improvise like for example you can simply put your phone in a coffee mug and just uh, place it and uh, go train and again i really do think that the most important thing about the videos is that they don't take too much time to set up there's really little friction 
position so you're not thinking that, oh I have to set the camera up, I don't want to so you don't go train just don't 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 do that and now we come to the actual most important thing about uh, taking videos of your dog trainings and it's the camera placement now camera placement mainly depends on what are you doing for agility for example the beneficial angle would be filming from a slightly higher vantage point so your camera is looking down at you and be that's because you can see your dog's lines better you can see your own lines better and the perspective is just better for seeing what's happening on the course and that's the reason why I often uh, will put uh, my camera on the dog walk if I'm not using that and so I, c I just try to get as high as possible for example I use uh, this uh, selfie stick for taking for placing my camera for agility drinks and it goes it's about a meter and so if you put it on the ground one meter it's it's quite high but it's not usually high enough so sometimes I'll put it on a chair sometimes on the dog walk so I try to get the camera as high as possible for my dog training videos honestly I would gladly use a drone for that but I just don't think that my dogs would, would love that and uh, I like I, I don't want to worry about thousand dollars equipment at my agility training, whatever. But if you're training like obedience or tricks, then usually it would be more beneficial to place your camera at the angle where it's uh, straight in front of your dog. And so maybe let's say that your camera is at the eye level of your dog and so you really see what your dog is doing. But just uh, keep in mind that you also need to see yourself. So. Uh, keep that in mind that uh, you always want to see also what you were doing because you can't understand what happened if you don't see what you are doing what what commands are you giving to your dog maybe unconsciously like uh, I tend to go uh, vaguely around crazy with my hands I don't even know what I'm doing and so I really need to see that in videos but uh, so when I'm taking videos of uh, either my obedience class or uh, dog tricks I always put the camera lower and there have been like those occasions where it's really important that I have seen that for example in one obedience class I realized that Mio thinks that she can see me if I'm wearing this one type of skirt she thinks that she's somehow below the skirts even though that's not really true but like that's how she feels and so she starts this leaning action she's like leaning and looking at me like uh, almost around the corner and so I realized that, okay I, I can't wear those skirts when I'm training Mio with Lamora they're fine but I can do them with Mio and the next point you need to consider when you're placing your camera is what do you need to see like for example if you're using your phone and your station for example if you're using your phone so you have only one vantage point you won't be going around and you want to take video of agility course that's really quite a big field that you need to film and uh, so you need to decide where to place it what's the most important thing you want to see because even when you place the camera in a way that you will see the whole field um, the obstacles that get farther away from the camera you won't see them so well there won't be so much detailing and you won't see every movement and so if I have to film my own agility competition you know the historic things that used to happen before pandemic I always um, in the occasions where I were alone and I have to film myself before I had the 360 camera I would always choose like what are the most important things that I really need to see like maybe there is this very difficult thing in the course or maybe there is this one thing that we have been training for and so I really need to see how it's going on this course and so I would put the camera closer to that part and so I'll see the rest of the course a bit less but there's this one really important part another example might be some maybe like distance work like if you want to send your dog, I don't know, for example, if you want to send your dog for obedience uh, training, like you have to send to the, to the square and dog has to lay down. In that occasion, most beneficial would be to place the 
camera immediately behind the square so you can see like how like the dog is coming towards the camera and then you see what happens there and maybe your interaction with the dog at the beginning isn't so important so i'd say that the main things uh, for choosing your camera angle and where to place your camera when you're doing that for dog training depends uh, on many things but the most important things that you need to remember is you need to see yourself i know it sometimes gets scary and stuff but you need to see yourself you will learn a lot you also need to consider what's the most important thing that you want to capture and place camera closer to that thing and also for agility you want to go higher and for obedience or tricks you want to go slightly lower we're almost at the end of the video mio decided to join me i want to talk about one extra thing in the facebook groups i have really often seen people asking about those uh, self uh, tracking cameras uh, up for agility trainings and stuff and I have never tried using one but I, I have some thoughts about it I have thoughts about why I wouldn't buy it also if someone wants to send me one uh, I'm up for it maybe you've seen like Instagram ads there is this one ad with uh, like uh, horses where there's following camera or for, with dancing and stuff and so first, uh, those aren't actually the cameras that's doing the, the following, it's actually a mount that's doing the following. And so there is this one generic one on Instagram, I don't even know what it's called, I don't know why, I don't know it's... It, I don't even know if you can trust it, I don't know how good it is, but uh, there are also other options, for example there are those phone gimbals that you can use and uh, most of them have this uh, function where you just link your gimbal with your phone via app and then on your app you mark what you want the phone to follow and then the phone will send the information to the gimbal and the gimbal will automa automatically rotate and uh, so that uh, the thing that you want to follow will always keep in the frame. I think it might be really interesting for like a uh, trick training or for obedience where you go, don't go really far from your dog but for agility I, I'm not even sure if it would work because um, because the camera has to, has to track two objects actually you aren't always running together with your dog you're sending your dog dog is going through the tunnels and so you have to choose just one to which your camera will be following because you can't uh, like uh, say to your camera oh you know always keep those two objects in the cam in the frame so that's a, um, an issue for agility training i'd say so that's why I don't consider using that. But also I think it would be really just hard to get your camera to track you. Whereas like the workflow would be a bit bigger, like you have to stand there, track, track your camera and then you go, go back and you're... Plus also I think that m lots of us actually train in really dark spaces. And so in dark spaces the camera resolution doesn't, isn't so good and I'm afraid that cameras wouldn't be actually actually able to track you so that's why I haven't really considered for myself any of those tracking devices I don't know maybe they might be interesting to try but I'm, I'm, I'm just not quite so sure about them and so I, I don't think that anyone has ever used one at least I haven't seen in the groups any like much information about that leave me a comment below if you have tried something like that I'd be really interested like if I'm correct actually about thinking this I might be completely wrong because as I said I have never tried that these are just my thoughts about uh, like uh, would I like would I consider it as an option and right now no I wouldn't because I haven't seen any proof or evidence that it would be beneficial for dog training but but uh, maybe it might be. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. If you found this video beneficial in any way to you, please uh, like it and subscribe to my channel. And maybe leave a comment below. Tell me what uh, info would you like to see next from me. And I'll see you next week.